Why, hello everyone. Welcome to Playframe and also to the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. The Stanley Parable, if you are not familiar, is a uh, indie game that came out back in 2011, I want to say, roughly. Uh, it was uh, created primarily by uh, Davey Reedon and uh, William Pugh, it was sort of the uh, game that put both of them kind of more on the map in uh, indie game dev circles. Uh, and it was great. It was a, a sort of comedy narrative game about uh, narrative in video games and player choice and the relationship between the player and the designer and stuff like that. And it was very funny and it was great. Uh, I loved it a great deal. This, the Ultra Deluxe Edition, is a kind of overhauled and updated version of the game that came out in 2022 uh, that is both a remake and also sort of an expansion, even almost sequel in some ways, I hear. I don't know. I've not played it, but I am very excited too because I love the original and uh, it seemed like, hey, this is a great way to spend our sort of Wednesday free slot for a little while. Let's do that. I've been excited to check this one out. So begin the game. For any of you who have not yet experienced the Stanley Parable, I am very excited for you. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. And here we go. We are now in control. And I do love that this looks very nearly identical to how the, uh, <laughs> the game originally looked, or rather the source version of the game that they came out with a couple of years after the original sort of free release that they have put out. Um, <laughs> that's why it looks very Half-Life 2 in here in general. I love that they've sort of preserved that Half-Life mod look. But anyway, uh, right. Stepping out of office. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Hmm, okay, meeting room, meeting room. Where is the... Wow, this is a boring office. Where is... The meeting room, though. Meeting room? Hmm. No. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay. You're the boss. Meeting room, meeting room. Meeting room? Yet there was not a single person here either. Oh. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Hmm. I, I'm going to delay a little bit because I want to read what's on some of these whiteboards. Meeting room. Floor four something. Ah, it's the schedule, of course. Group planning replaced with... Or cabal planning, rather, replaced with group planning. That is... That is a bit better. Um... Do not alter without consulting the whiteboard manager. <laughs> um, targets. Push for funding for R&D of new coffee machine. Check. Standardize graphs. 40x wide. Not cost efficient. Get Chris out of the broom closet. Ongoing. Synergize papers. 
scribble that out. Hire someone to synergize papers. Papers are too synergized. Fire paper guy. Hire somebody to fire the paper synergizing guy. Who moved my desk? Please keep the targets on the topic of... scribbled out. <laughs> the future was yesterday. Tomorrow is now. Tomorrow. Complete today's unfinished agenda items. Write next day's agenda. Reflect. Employee 417, 405, 491, 416, 431. Jim. Huh. So, um... Lots of work being done in here. Uh, by quarterly post review review. We need more, no, less reviews. 402 and 405 want to get rid of the death sport portion in the primary review schedule, but I think that's a stupid idea. More water coolers. More water cooler heaters. Charts need to be more hip to appeal to teenage demographic. Find teenagers to put in teenage demographic. Big net? Some sort of child trap? Here we have size of demographic. Teenagers, quite small. Space between the teenagers, a lot of percent. Throw something in the ideas bin. One, no more bins and trash cans. Two, renaming of the ideas bin. Three, firing of me. Four, unknown. Um, it's a lot of text in here. What do people want? Things. Um, happy feelings? No. Violet James, you are fired. <laughs> uh, money, more money things, but with money to buy more things? Graphs? Graphs about things and money? We have our new product. <laughs> the stock market is somewhere here. A colored in segment. Pie. Stripes. Requires more secondary research. Target demographic? Teenagers. What is hot? Profits, 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 profits. <laughs> and, of course, let's see. Solving interpersonal... Oh. What are your dreams for the future? Nature, transcend, talk radio, mitosis, charts, a boat, plant life, lunch, travel, metamorphosis, comatose, less air, clear skin. Tips for not getting fired. Talk less. Do unbelievably amazing work all the time every day with no expectation of promotion or recognition. And don't get fired. Good tips. How to solve a dispute with a coworker. Let it ball up inside you. Take it out passive aggressively on other coworkers. Resent coworkers for not supporting you more. Let it ball up inside you. Take, yeah. <laughs> Using slides to assure employees that everything is okay. Make sure your slide has a slick blue graphic in the header and throw some bevel on all the text. This will ensure a calm and productive work environment. Everyone is unique. You most of all. Good slides. Synergize core value expenditures. Shift global market. Paradigm, I'm guessing. Monetize. Free to play. <laughs> Help, I'm a post-it. <laughs> it's a lot of joke per square foot in this room. My compliments. Anyway, right, I was looking for the manager's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Upstairs, right, yes. Um. Ooh, fancy. Uh. Nope, that's the bathroom. Boss, or manager. Hello? Hello? Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Hmm. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. Oh. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Oh. Two, eight. Four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. That's a good point. Hmm. Alas. I'm sure they won't mind if I poke around looking for clues as to their whereabouts. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. That is true. There's no way that I should be able to know that. Boy, they have a lot of books. Two, eight, four, five. All right, I'm going. Two, eight, four, five. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input oh. the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. 
he stepped into the newly opened passageway. Oh. Well, okay then. Hmm. Hello? Hmm. It's kind of ominous feeling, but I... Don't really see any other routes. Um... This is fine. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Oh. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Oh. You all right back here? I don't feel like I'm going to get back in that elevator. Elevators shouldn't spark. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Okay. Hmm. Tempting, but... The direction was clear. To the mind control facility. Um. Well, got a button. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Well, we've come this far. And also, they closed the door behind me, so... Yes, it turns out I do. Um... Camera button? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Oh dear. Um... Button? This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? It is starting to look that way. No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. Yeah, you're His right. own life in someone else's control? Never. Yeah. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Um. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Works for me. Um, where do I do that? Voice? Any recommendations? You know, this place is lit up. I'll go to the facility power. Wait. There's a button that says five. Hmm. Mind controls idle, awaiting input. 
And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. I agree. Off. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes! He had won! He had defeated the machine! Unshackled himself from someone else's command! Freedom was mere moments away! And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him, for it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Seems pretty nice. Okay. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin. The feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. The end is never the end. And here we are again. So then, um... All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. So we have reached an ending, uh, contained within the game. Now, many of you were probably wondering, the game did give us several opportunities to uh, choose our path along the way, even if we were explicitly told to go uh, one way in particular. Could we have tried those other routes? And yes, absolutely, we could. Let's do that now. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This time, we do not. I mean, we shut down the mind control device. What do they expect? This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Maybe I do. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Good room. Worth it. Yes. Really, really worth it being here in the room. Mm -hmm. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. Text is too small for me to read. Having a great time in this room, though. No regrets. At this point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. Hey, now. It's possible that this is why everyone left. Spoil sport. Stanley sat around waiting for more dialogue, but when a long time had passed and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. All right, all right. I'm going. 
But at last, he'd had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. Hmm. Well, as long as we're being antagonistic. What about this way? Ooh. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. But I'm rewarded for it. Look at all these neat new rooms. Caution, do not lie. If you are lying right now, stop. <laughs> you got it, sign. What else can we find? Um... Warning. Do not jump from the cargo lift while it is in motion. Will cause death. Penalty for misuse of cargo lift, $1,000. Penalty for jumping off the cargo lift, $5,000. Oh, man. I can't afford that. Hmm. Don't have a key card for that door. I'll just... ride the lift. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. True. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. Who? Elaborate. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Elaborate. Hmm. Urgent. Employees should never under any circumstances attempt... Oh well. But yes, narrator, you were going to elaborate. Um, that's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this, to reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Okay. Um, hello? Yeah. Hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Hmm. Could be stubborn, but I do want you to sort of explain yourself. Seems like someone's being a bad sport. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Hey! Good morning, employee 427. Press right on your controller. Well, now I'm not going to. Until someone apologizes. For being mean. And playing pranks. Unless I'm given no other options. Hmm... Fine. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Please press X. Hmm. Fine. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. 
Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. Someone's being rather petty about all this. But in his mind, ah, in his mind he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Um, press X to watch TV? And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. I remember that. The thought excited him terribly. Please press right to spend time with the boys. So he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. I remember that. Please press Y to prepare dinner. As he wandered through this fantasy hmm. world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. Um, please press Y to tell your kids a story. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again and then again and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. Maybe. Please press Y to tell your wife you love her. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets, the more he forgets which life is the real one. Please press A to go to sleep. And I'm trying to tell him this, that in this world he can never be anything but an observer, that as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Please press B to be at work in the morning. Well, now I feel conflicted. You've given me an order not to follow an order. Which do I not do? Um. I'm feeling stubborn, but also confused. B? You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? Um, please press Y to question nothing. I suppose I can't, not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I hmm. tried... The end is never the end. And here we are again. So, if you've not experienced this game before, you are getting the idea. The game is giving you choices and options, uh, and the game reacts to those choices. But all of those choices are ultimately sort of exploring <laughs> just the relationship between designer and player, and uh, the various ways that can shake out. Which is amusing and interesting, and uh, 
This game can end a lot of different ways. Uh, probably even more ways now in this new expanded version. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. So let's explore a bit. Let's uh, see what else we can shake out of this. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. It's true. Hmm. There's so much text they've clearly written here, but that I can't zoom in on close enough to actually read. Anyway, let's see. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Well, since we were a bit of a spoil sport last time, we'll follow orders for a little bit this time. Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Did we check this before? I don't think we did. A broom closet. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. We could... or... There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. You say that, but look at all these good assets. People spent time on these. I will appreciate them. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. Fair point. And yet I'm having fun. Are you... are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. I don't know. It's fun. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. It's true. But hey, they put it Maybe in here. to you, this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. That's not how I sound. I hope your friends find this concerning. I feel mocked. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That or with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. Okay, I was wrong. Now I feel mocked. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. No, I'm not. They have fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right. 
When you've done that, just step out into the hallway. Someone's feeling sassy. Well, now I'm not going to. I wasn't going to before, but now I'm extra not going to. I live here now. This is my broom closet. No narrators allowed. Did he finally give up? I think he may have given up. Took him long enough. I win. Now I will exit the broom closet, but smugly so. <sighs> ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. Hey! Spoil sport. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Fine, fine. I'm still going to explore, though. What if I stay in here for ten minutes? Ooh. Money in the morning, money in the evening, money for breakfast, money crisp. <laughs> Extreme bathrooms. And Time Magazine. Pretty nice bathroom they got here. It's good to be boss. A lot of wasted space in here. Ooh. Can go in here too. Now this, as a business strategy, I'm not so sure. <laughs> oh, an elevator here, too. Hmm, well, I am curious. Why not? Down, please. Can't tell me what to do. Slow elevator. Given there are presumably only two floors it can go to. Um... Probably fine. This is a much longer elevator than I expected. I hope that's me humming. How far down does this go? Uh-huh. You're messing with me. Well, what if I went up? Oh boy. I'm just going to guess. Yep. I mean, it's a pretty good joke. <laughs> There's lots of elevators that you would enter in a video game that do not actually move or take you anywhere. They just 
it's a nice little box the player can be hidden in so they can unload the previous space and load the new one in and then let them out. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. Well, that's different. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet, and so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Wait a minute. No? Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. This looks interactable, Trying to though. input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know... Maybe it's just that, that I'm close to this. was 2845. What if I put different numbers? One, two, three, four. Two, eight, four, five. All right. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. This time we are definitely going down the escape hallway. No question. We're getting out. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Nope. We escape. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Wait, what? What was that part? It said escape, though. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Nope. Not gonna. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. I can't hear you. La la la. Although this does look a little foreboding. Oh dear. Um. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Hey. Farewell, Stanley. You don't have to sound so happy about it. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator. What? As Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. But... What? Um... I think there's been a mistake, but in my favor, so I'll take it. The Stanley Parable. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? I don't know. Um. I'm just going to keep going. 
When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? <laughs> All the nature paintings. The office layout. This blueprint shows the office from the beginning of the game. The path from Stanley's office to the two doors was the first part of the game that was built. Sections have been added and altered throughout development, though the core layout remains almost identical to the first iteration. Checks out. The pacing of this opening section was important to get right. This corridor has been moved and altered to make sure the player reaches the two doors in a good time. <laughs> I love that you do get, even though a lot of this is, like, uh, presented comedically and jokingly, you do kind of get a sense for the creative headspace of the designer and the sort of push and pull between the player of, like, giving them a sense of freedom while still trying to tell a story and trying to, like, put thought into all the elements of the experience to pace it out and make it feel correct. It's very interesting, and it was especially interesting in the early 2010s when this came out. Like, a lot more games feel like they're doing this sort of, uh, sort of meta-level exploration narratively, but, uh, back then this was a pretty novel thing. Still pretty novel now, honestly. The set of the two open doors was the very first concrete piece of the Stanley Parable's design. Once this room was created, the rest of the game emerged as an extension of it, an exploration of the contradiction this room posed. Here are some filing cabinets. And some office computers. We're just getting to see all the assets now. A desk. The office doors. Button sounds. A selection of the sounds used throughout the game when buttons are pressed. Each sound is a mix of a keyboard stroke and a synthesized tone. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. And here are the credits. Written and designed by Davey Reedon and William Pugh. Developed by Crows, Crows, Crows. Art direction by Dominic... Jo I, I don't have to read the whole thing, I suppose. You can see it right here. It's a pretty good way to do credits, though. Based on the work of the Stanley Parable 2013 team. Which way to go? More office props. Maintenance room art. A lot of good stuff. The lounge. An early version. The apartment timer. In a previous version of the choice leading to the apartment ending, which we've not seen... A timer would give you 15 seconds to pick up the phone. Not picking up the phone would lead to a different ending. A cargo lift. Always intended to offer the choice of staying on or jumping to a different path. However, after this early version, we decided we also wanted the option of the player falling to their death. <laughs> a little tease of choices to come, I suppose. Zending levers. Originally a part of the Zending. I suppose we shouldn't spoil too many of these things for ourselves, should we? We ran four major teaser trailers over the course of this game's development, each meant to convey something about the spirit of the game. This is the first one, released in May of 2012. It features a series of broken rooms and the voice of the narrator informing viewers that he is repairing a new version of the Stanley Parable. I remember this one. What a great narrator, too. It's been the same narrator since the beginning. And it really adds a lot. Ah, the monitor room elevator. For a time, the elevator in the monitor room could go up or down, with freedom above and countdown below. We abandoned this when players found it too difficult to remember what was up and what was down, and placed the two endings together instead. Ah. This is the freedom ending, as it existed in beta.
A lot of good stuff. And I'm definitely very lost now. Oh, there's the exit. Okay. Um. suppose we shouldn't look at too many more things. Though I do love these little, um... Office zoo exhibits. From left to right, the evolution of Stanley's office over time. The first was created in November of 2011, the second in March of 2012, and the third in February of 2013. Office version 1. Office version 2. And office version 3. It's neat even just getting to see the little iterative changes and improvements and adjustments. Just all the small little things you do to go from this to the much more visually interesting and lived-in feeling this. It's neat to see. Anyway. The exit. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Did get a little antagonistic back there, I guess. Time to turn the game off, I suppose. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time... And we're back. <laughs> it's a great game, and we've really only scratched the surface, I think. So, uh, let's reconvene next week on Wednesday and do some more of this one. See if we can explore some more of this game's nooks and crannies and find some other endings and reveal a little bit more about it. Because this is a good time. I will see you all then. So, until next week, goodbye! Goodbye!